So very warm welcome to everybody. Uh, my name is Chris Petter. I'm the Associate Dean of the Screen School. Um, we're very happy you're interested to come and hear more about um, some of the courses here in the film and television programme area. Along with me in the session, we have um, David Knight, who's the course leader for BA Film and Television. And we have David Alamuti, who's the course leader for BA Film Practice. And we also have Tom Peel, who's one of our graduates from the BA Film and Television course, who's going to help with some of the Q&A um, at the end of the session. So just, yeah, just checking you're all in the right session for this afternoon. These are the three courses we're going to be looking at today. Um, and we'll, the way it's going to work is I'm going to give a bit of an overview about the university and the school. Um, and then each of our course leaders is going to um, give us some more info on the particular courses. And our course leader for film and screen studies uh, couldn't be with us this afternoon. So I'll be um, covering that one as well. So just a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, this event gets recorded and it gets shared with you um, at the end of the event. And when we're all speaking, your microphones get automatically muted. And that's just to help us with um, broadcast quality. And as John said, you can post your question in the chat. That'd be great to hear what you want to know about. Um, it'd also be quite interesting to know which course you're actually interested in. Um, and then we've got John and some other members of LCC staff here to also support the session and they, they can intervene and talk to you individually if needed. So I'm just going to play you a short video now. You have something to say. You know it. We know it. But how can you show it? Creativity can be challenging. Maybe you'll do something unexpected. Dream up an idea, then flip it on its head. Maybe you'll look a little deeper, imagine new futures, tell new stories, make people feel things. Maybe you just don't know how to show it, and you try one way, then another way, and keep trying and failing until you find the right way your way because whatever you have to say however big or small it might feel you owe it to yourself to say take your idea make it a reality and then set it free creativity can be challenging sure but guess what you're up for the challenge so what are you going to say So um, why choose to study with us at LCC? Um, well, it's a big decision. You're gonna commit a lot of time and a lot of financial commitment is made to take on a degree course. Um, and all our kind of open day processes really are just trying to help you find the right course for yourself and you're, it's gonna be the best fit for you. So LCC is part of the University of the Arts London. Um, and we're the largest art and design provider in Europe. And we're a pioneering world leader in creative communicative education. We've got a really long-standing reputation. Um, the, the college at LCC has been established since 1894. And we've been located in Elephant and Castle in central London for over 50 years. So LCC is the home to future-facing creatives who explore and rethink what communication is and why it matters. We learn, research, teach, and create across three different schools, design, media, and screen. We support our students to explore the power of storytelling, develop a career they love and make a difference across the wider society. So LCC is one of six colleges that make up the University of the Arts London. And as students with us, you will become part of a huge creative network, which we'll talk a little bit more about later. In terms of the kind of external recognition, um, the university's currently ranked second in the QS World University rankings um, by a subject for art and design and we're the top institute offering undergraduate courses. Students at University of the Arts London form more startup companies than any other university. We've been named the top five greenest university and have the highest ranked London University in the Green League table. And this year, UAL has moved from 45 to 15th in the Guardian rankings, which is the highest placement um, for us so far. So um, within our college, London College of Communication, uh, we're split into three schools with about 1,500 students in each one. We have the media school, the design school, and the screen school, which is where these courses sit. 
At the Screen School, our core aim is to enable everyone who studies with us to develop their skills, the confidence, the knowledge, the experience, and the attitude. Ensure everything you need to be effective and innovative creators and to succeed in the chosen field that you take. Our courses have creative communication at their heart and across all our courses, we encourage our students to explore the power of storytelling, creating compelling narratives to develop a career that they'll be passionate about. The Screen School brings together film and television with disciplines of games, animation, virtual reality and sound and music. The school is organised into three programmes or departments. One's called Moving Image Digital Arts, which houses the kind of animation, games, VR type courses. We have sound and music, which includes sound arts and music production. And we have film and television, which we'll be getting onto in detail. Our subjects aren't taught in isolation, but within a diverse creative community, enabling you to bridge the gap between aspiration and success within the creative industries. Our students and staff are a dynamic selection of creatives and storytellers who through the use of sight and sound produce innovative and engaging experiences. From collaborative unit projects to industry-led live briefs, you'll have opportunities to work with students across the three schools, where you'll be encouraged to share your ideas and draw on each of your unique talents and skill sets. And you'll also be able to access opportunities right across the university. I'm now gonna play you another short video, which gives you some more detail about the Screen School. London College of Communication is located at Elephant and Castle, which is right in the centre of London. We've been teaching film and television here for nearly 40 years, and we're constantly bringing in new courses as the industry changes. We have courses in film and television, sound arts and screenwriting, but we also have courses in animation, virtual reality and games design. We create narratives and interactive experiences for our audiences. We know the industry is not as diverse as our student body. So it's a social justice issue for us to train our students to become the new faces of industry and to carry their voices forward. We're a film school, a screen school, a university that have got things to say about how the industry can be even better than it is. So we're also looking into the future and saying, this is fantastic, but there's a lot that we can improve. We ask big questions about film culture and film heritage. We emerge from that with relevant contributions to developing a global culture. It's really important to me to live and study in a place that has so many different people and cultures. We're launching our new master's program in alternative reality and virtual reality. Those are newish technologies that are helping us rethink what an engagement with a range of team experience might be. One of the really exciting things about coming to study at the London College of Communication is that everybody is studying a creative discipline of some sort and they all need to connect. We offer the opportunity for our students to collaborate across courses. This means students from VR get to work with a student studying sound design, get to work with students in animation. This is a really important opportunity for our students to understand a real world creative environment. Students are fully prepared to go out into the industry and be the creative voices of the future. Looking back, I really value the luxury of collaboration, the joy of working with people. The college has incredible facilities from workshops and technical suites through to the Stanley Kubrick archive that contains everything from his shooting scripts to his advertising campaigns. I think I'm going to leave LTC with a much more developed presence, a lot more confidence in the work that I'm making and the direction I'm going, um, a broader network, and just more experience in presenting my work as well in a variety of different contexts. Having people who understand games design and music production and even things like screen printing around you really helps. We have many alumni that we're extremely proud of. They've won Oscars, they've won BAFTAs. Their films have screened at Cannes and Sundance and festivals all over the world. It's really important for us to continue to understand and celebrate our history and take it with us into the future.
So within the film and television program area, we've got a full range of postgraduate courses and research degrees, as well as the undergraduate courses that you're considering. We're going to look at those courses in detail in a moment, but all three take an integrated approach to theory and practice, which allows you to develop all the key practical skills you'll need, along with an advanced understanding of the context of the work you're making through detailed analysis of approaches to filmmaking and an understanding of your audiences. Two of our courses really focus on production-based making from first term projects through to final graduate films. And the third course has a greater focus on the cultural and critical understanding of filmmaking. And the practice is really around commissioning, distribution and curation of film and screen. Much of the work in the creative industries is based on team working and collaboration is at the heart of what we do in the Screen School. On all our undergrad courses, you'll have the opportunity to work collaboratively uh, both within your courses and with others outside your main discipline. The projects are many and varied and devised by course teams and often involve external partners. There's multi multi multidisciplinary collaborations, um, learning how to work with students on group projects, how to work with um, technicians in a collaborative way to complete projects, and also collaborations outside of your studies on your own personal projects, which could be right across the university. Um, and one of the advantages of being in such a large university is you get um, offers and opportunities for these extracurricular collaborations um, across the wider community. We're a college of makers and learning through doings at the centre of what we do. We like to get our hands dirty, we like to take risks, explore new ideas and experiment with different techniques, innovating our approaches. And an important aspect is we're happy to fail in a supportive environment, which is a key part of learning any kind of subject area. Um, whatever course you do, your practice will be hands on. We celebrate learning through doing. We have a wide range of um, production um, equipment, which we'll talk about a bit more later. Um, you've got lots of college wide um, available cameras and um, sort of post production technologies that are available to you. Um, and you'll also find um, that was quite a lot of our time is spent thinking about how you're actually going to get your work to an audience. Uh, for example, exploring the film festival circuit. Um, your experience at LCC will be led and supported by a wide range of specialist staff. Our academic teams and our technical staff are experienced industry practitioners who have a wealth of specialist teaching and learning knowledge. They continue to practice and remain closely linked with their industries. And this experience has fed directly into the design of our courses. We also use a wide range of freelance specialists who come directly from industry to teach into our courses. Much of your learning will be through your connections with the specialist technicians that support both our tech facilities and also the huge range of equipment we have in our kit room. Our academics also play a prominent role in the UK's creative culture with research that enhances public understanding of the major issues and benefits the creative and cultural industries can, be, can bring. And your learning journey is also supported by a wide range of professional support staff, academic support services, learning resources specialists, counselling and mental health support, and all the kind of practical advice that you may need around finance and accommodation, for example. All the courses we run are designed with an industry focus, preparing you for your future career in the creative industries. We run industry projects that use what we call live briefs, with, often with external partners, and these simulate a kind of working environment. We invite many industry guests in through external speaker programs. Um, and as I said, we've always championed the use of freelance academics who work alongside our permanent staff teams, bringing in their current industry knowledge directly to the courses. We have an industry mentor program and a full university-wide careers and employment service. And many courses, including some of these, have work placement or work-based learning opportunities within them. We educate graduates who will shape and change our industries. Um, the UK screen industry is not widely known for its diversity and inclusivity. And one of our aims across the school is to try and address some of these issues. For example, as one in five key production women and uh, personnel at the moment are women, 3% of employees in film and television production are from a BAME background, and 1% of workers in film production are declared as disabled. In contrast, the student body and our staff teams are a diverse, um, more diverse creative community. In terms of gender diversity at LCC, over half, um, maybe 70% are female. A quarter of our students, um, are, a quarter of our home students are black, Asian and minority ethnic. 90% uh, have a dis declared disability. 
and about a quarter are from low socioeconomic backgrounds. Um, our courses are informed by changes in respective industries and we're hoping to develop graduates who will shape and change the respective industries. The university um, has a new strategy and it's made a commitment to the principles of social, racial and climate justice. And we've embedded teaching and learning around these principles into our courses. And I know um, David, David Knight will talk a little bit more about um, our partnership with BAFTA, um, with BAFTA Albert Education, um, which is one of our kind of partnerships we're really proud of. Yeah, thank um, you. Yeah, sorry, not handing over quite yet. Um, so um, in terms of employability and preparing for a job after uni, um, it's one of the key elements of the courses. And our careers and employment department is there offering practical support, helping students and alumni um, into work. And they offer advice with funding opportunities, things like preparing your CVs and interview preparation. And you'll also find within the college, you've got placements, careers and enterprise zone called The Place which again will help you with all things related to employment and opportunities. And we also run something called Arts Temps, which allows you to try and um, pick up freelance work for the university whilst you're studying. And I know Tom could maybe say a bit more about that at the end. We're a truly um, global university and staff and students come from right across the world, bringing with them a wide range of perspectives. And um, the films are informed by a, a real global perspective. We're part of something called SELECT, which is an international film school organization, and that allows us to exchange ideas and best practices right across the world in terms of um, film educators. We run ranges of study trips, um, and we look for um, future kind of study abroad options. So there's chances for some of you to take exchange opportunities within these courses. Um, and also one of the great things if you join us is you would, upon graduation, become part of the UAL alumni network which includes thousands and thousands of people um, with kind of groups set up all over the world who regularly meet up and provide kind of support to each other um, once they've graduated from the university. In terms of our spaces and facilities, we've got excellent industry standard facilities. Um, if you come to an on-site open day, you'll have a chance to explore those a bit more, but you can also find out a lot of information about that on our websites, about what we have on offer. And we've got extensive um, loan store, which has all our our specialist equipment, lots of that is ring fence for students on particular courses, but there's also a wide range of kit you can take out um, being, a, being a student on any course within the, within the college. We have a whole series of workshops um, which also support your learning. Some will be more directly relevant to the course and others may not. So we have a 3D workshop, creative technology lab, letterpress, printing areas, photography studios and so on. So as in that short film one of the students talking about, there's all kinds of things you can do to help support your core discipline. Um, as well as college facilities, students in the film and TV area have arranged to a whole load of industry standard facilities as well. We have 4K projection in our cinemas, um, a kit room I've talked about already. We have shooting studios, one called the Black Box Studio Space. We have a fully rigged TV studio post-production suites and a digital space, which is a kind of open access space that students can continue to work on software that you might need to um, carry out your coursework. You may have seen, we've got um, a new building planned, which we're expected to move into in 2026, um, but we're also continuing to, continuing to invest fully in the facilities uh, that we've got and a whole Capital Works program has been going on to ensure that um, our experience is the best it can be. Uh, before we've made our move to the new building. Um, in terms of students and alumni, um, as I said, you'll part of, become part of a truly global network um, on graduation. And we also often invite alumni back in, as Tom is an example, I suppose, of that, where we get people to come in and talk to our existing students. Um, but as well as kind of open days, you might find alumni come into your course sessions, talk to you about what's their experience been um, once they've graduated and moved on from university. Um, we have some various ways you can enrich your learning experience as well as the course. We have something called a Diploma in Professional Studies. We have a, compute, a Creative Computing um, Diploma as well. And David, I think, will say a little bit more about that when we get to his slides in a moment. Um, yeah, so let's hand over to you there, David, if you want to tell us a bit more detail about VA Film and Television. Yeah, thank you very much, Chris. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, 
Thank you very much for joining us. My name is um, David Knight. I'm course leader for BA Honours Film and Television. And in my section, um, I hope to give you an overview um, of all of the um, fantastic uh, positive outcomes um, that our graduates um, come out with after studying with us. And, and Tom, who's joining us today, is a, a very recent graduate from the course as well. So Tom will be giving you his perspective. So ultimately, um, one of the main aims of um, Be Honours Film and Television is to really acknowledge that nobody really knows over the next three to five years what the screen industry is, is going to look like. There's so much rapid change now, both in terms of audiences and technology and the ways in which we consume moving image, that what the course does is um, prepare students um, across year one, year two and year three of the degree course so that they become um, either highly employable uh, in terms of joining as um, early career graduates or new entrants, as they're also called. Or also, it's important to acknowledge that many of our students um, want to use the BA to then springboard into postgraduate study. Say, for example, at the moment, I've got um, many third years who are applying to um, courses either within UAL at master's level um, or to other institutions both in this country and also internationally so it really gives everyone an opportunity to prepare themselves for how they see their next five years um, as part of um, the course uh, in terms of how we prepare graduates um, for meeting their ambitions and their aims and that's really what myself as course leader and the course team are doing is giving every student an opportunity to realize their potential in whatever area that they want to um, specialize in as they move through the course. Uh, next slide, please, Chris. So thank you. So one of the main kind of outcomes um, for studying uh, film and television is um, in the title of the course. Uh, we're a course that balances um, both the practice and the theory um, in making films and making television. Um, so we, we develop um, graduates to have really highly developed uh, collaborative skills. And working collaboratively and working in teams um, is something that we actually teach. And inevitably, students um, are very challenged with that idea of working in groups um, to make film and television content. But really, it's the one thing that unites all of the screen industries is the ability to actually work in a team is one of the most important outcomes um, that we offer and celebrate um, as a course. So that's really important. We also provide um, our students with an opportunity to learn um, highly skilled practices such as um, producing and what that actually means in terms of managing a production. Um, also in directing, um, in cinematography, um, in editing, um, in art direction, um, and in sound design. So we cover all of the kind of the major heads of department roles, as they're called, uh, on the course. So students have a genuine opportunity to learn, you know, a really good set of skills from a dedicated course team across year one, year two, and year three. Um, we also um, promote and value one of the main universities principles, which is um, social purpose and social justice. Uh, and we do that by identifying um, the core component parts of uh, being a successful production, which means not just being creative, but also understanding that we have to acknowledge all of the many different diverse communities, whether that's LGBTQ plus um, or communities uh, of different cultures, that all plays a part in how we prepare graduates um, to become really successful and empathetic film and program makers. Next slide, please, Chris, thank you. So what I would say that this is a really important slide um, that is about what the course is aiming to do. Um, so one of the main graduate outcomes is to develop your understanding of social purpose and green leadership for film and television uh, and your responsibility in collaboration to ensure that um, we're all complying to industry be best practices for sustainable and ethical production processes. 
So underneath the course, we really are training our graduates to kind of understand the responsibilities of when you're representing different social groups in terms of cultural sensitivities and making sure that um, all of the productions are incredibly well researched so that they are representing in a very non-biased way um, the stories which are either told through fiction um, or told through um, factual and documentaries. Next slide, please, Chris. Thank you. So this is um, my last slide of my part of the presentation. Um, and we're really proud of this particular course diagram in that this is presenting to you what your student journey would be if you decided to uh, apply to our course. So just to give you an overview, you can see that the course is made up um, of what's called blocks of study. Um, so they break down into, in year one, um, you'll study two uh, semesters um, and that's, that's called level four. And out of that level, you gain 120 credits um, for level four. And then in year two, um, you gain 120 credits and year three, you gain 120 credits, which gives you your full 360 credits um, to then receive your degree classification for the BA honours part of the, um, the subject. So from this course map, you can also see that the S's indicate the summative assessment points. So like many BA courses in the arts and humanities, we don't actually have examinations. We are marking students who gain the credits um, based on the coursework um, that they um, submit um, to the unit of study, which is then marked by our um, tutors. So over the course of the three years, and again, re referencing the course map, we have a very good balance between the theory and the practice, um, which means that not only are you graduating with a very good knowledge of um, being a practitioner, but also understanding what the history and traditions and movements that are behind the subject so that you can articulate to a very good level the criticality of the subject uh, as well as undertaking the practice and that's a really important set of skills to consider it's not just about the technical workflows uh, but also an understanding of what the whole subject uh, means in terms of the bigger picture of the arts and the humanities um, it's those qualities that we really kind of promote on BA Honours Film um, and Television. So some of the other things that I'd like to touch upon uh, that Chris mentioned is that you can gain a lot of um, other knowledge and experiences by uh, some of the um, add-ons that you have within your three years. So the first one to talk about is the Diploma in Professional Studies. So the acronym is DPS and the DPS um, is a work-based um, learning opportunity that students start to be introduced to in year two. So the DPS team within UAL will actually start to train year two students if they decide that they like the idea of doing a four year degree program, which means that they are doing an additional year between the end of their year two and the commencement of their year three. And this is a one year work-based um, learning year, which students do receive a diploma. Um, and that can either be in um, film and television or related subject, um, or you can also do it in the creative computing school as well, which is part of UAL. If you felt that you wanted to develop your skills in AI um, or programming, um, or like the idea of applying programming to an artifact as an outcome, then you can also um, opt to do your DPS within the computing school. So we've had some really good successes in the first year. We've had a, um, one of our third years who's just rejoined us. Um, Beata undertook the Diploma in Professional Studies last year, and she really had a fantastic year in gaining skills working within two or three different industries that she's then able to apply to her third year studies. So that's the DPS. Um, you don't have to do it, it is optional, um, and you do receive a lot of support uh, and training 
um, before you actually go and undertake that that year if you do decide to go for the diploma in professional studies. If you don't, then you obviously carry on from year two um, directly into year three of the degree programme. Another thing that we have to recognise is that the film and television industries um, do use an incredible amount of resources. Um, and as Chris mentioned, under the kind of the main banner of social purpose and social justice, it's really important that our students recognise the need for being green leaders. Um, and we absolutely on the course celebrate the fact that we are training our students not only to be creative and strategic and enterprising, but all of that is now couched by the need to understand what carbon footprinting is, um, exemptions, how to offset your carbon and how to make your production as green as possible. And, and that's something that um, I advocate as course leader as being a really important part of making graduates highly employable. So we teach um, Albert certification and Albert's an organization that was formed by um, BAFTA. And say for example, um, all of the many sort of broadcasters from the BBC to Channel 4, um, you can't make a programme for them unless um, you're putting in and presenting your Albert certification. So on the course, we are teaching um, about the principles of Albert and how to apply them to film and television production. Um, the third opportunity is, is um, for AVID certification. So AVID is a non-linear um, editing um, software and AVID um, produces AVID Media Composer and Pro Tools. Um, and this is an opportunity for you to gain um, certification um, so that you can have a, an opportunity to, you know, similar to the DPS and Albert, that you have this opportunity to have lots of different certifications while you're studying on the degree program as well. So just to summarize, um, BA Honours Film and Television is balancing between film and television. And the television side means that we're training students to understand what it means to work within a broadcast context. And that covers multi-camera studio. So we have a de dedicated um, multi-camera TV studio at the LCC campus where you'll be based. And from year one to year two and year three, you have the opportunity of understanding and learning current television practices and how to work as a team um, creating and producing multi-camera material. So ultimately the course is providing not only production and contextual skills, but more importantly, understanding what your social purposes are uh, in terms of representing the social groups that you want to make programming for in the future. Um, so thank you very much. That's my overview of the course. Thanks, David. OK, we'll move on now to um, David Allenwitty, and he's going to tell you a bit more about uh, the BA film practice. Thank you, Chris. Uh, so, yeah, um, welcome. Um, so I'll start by saying that a lot like David, um, David's introduction, David Knight's introduction to the film and television programme, uh, film practice is also built on this idea that we are in an age where the film industries are changing. Um, and when I mean the film industries, so the way we en envisage the industry uh, on this course is that, A, it's global. So it's a globalizing in industry where films are made via co-productions between countries. Um, and B, it's often very fluid that in that the cinema as a space, as an entity, even as a practice is becoming massively challenged. Uh, by all sorts of other distribution models, which is having a, a huge impact on the way we make uh, and the way we envisage and think about filmmaking. Uh, so within that chain, within, within an industry that's constantly changing because of technology and because of cross-cultural collaboration, um, this BA Honours Film Practice really addresses those things uh, within the curriculum. Uh, so I suppose uh, another big part of what we do, uh, Chris, can we maybe move on to the next slide, please? Yeah, so a big bit of what we do is uh, we try to prepare you to work and understand how to work and operate within that very dynamic and, and complex change. Um, so I would say that the Aonis film practice, if you want to understand it in a very simple way, uh, these four headings are really good. So specialist knowledge, um, we call them craft knowledge. So for us, uh, those timeless crafts of producing 
writing, directing, production design, uh, sound uh, and editing are core components of the degree. So you will, if you do fit BA Honours Film Practice, you will be studying those core crafts uh, at in, uh, introductory level, intermediate level in the second year and advanced level in the third year. So a lot of the curriculum is built around putting you into situations where you can develop the knowledge to execute what you need to in those craft roles, but also to learn how to collaborate with other people who are doing similar crafts all towards um, you know, one end, one project, if you like. And uh, that sort of bleeds into the second point, community of practice. And again, David Knight touched touched on this. Uh, collaboration is a, is a crucial bit uh, of our degree. So I would say that um, if you don't enjoy working in groups, um, we can teach you, we teach you all the skills of working in groups and we help groups because groups inevitably face difficulties. Uh, but I would say that fundamentally, one of the prerequisites of the degree is that you enjoy working in groups. And hopefully all of you do because you're applying to do film and television. Um, as a subject. So uh, that sort of community of practice is a big one on the degree. You won't make a film individually. You will write scripts individually. Uh, you will write essays individually, but all of our filmmaking work is done collaboratively at, within groups. Um, the third bit, practice and theory. So I, I don't like to distinguish between these two. I call them praxis. So um, for us, the interrelationship between critically thinking about doing and actually doing uh, are very blurred and it's very difficult to tease out where one begins and one ends. So if, on this degree, you will be expected uh, to understand the criticality of your subjects, meaning the contexts that you are making your creative decisions within. We help you, we have three, what we call, if you want to call them theory units, but three theory units across the, the degree, one in the first year, which looks at the question of film aesthetics, uh, one in the second year, which looks at the question of film methodologies. And then we have a dissertation unit in the third year. So there is, beside all the practice and all the filmmaking, there is a very strong component of theoretical um, and critical thinking about practice. Uh, and then the final one, transferable skills. Um, you know, whatever any of the degrees in the screen school um, will give you a really good basis in core skills that you can use in many walks of life um, or, you know, be it postgraduate study. But also if you decide after three years that you enjoy, you don't want to be in, on production, you enjoy um, a, a job where you're sitting behind behind a desk and doing something else, all the skills you learn in in terms of a logistic organization, working in teams, working to deadlines. So there's a whole host of transferable skills that are baked into the degree that you will gain by simply doing the degree and meeting all your assessment points and all your deadlines. Um, Chris, can we move on to the next one, please? So wrapping up here before we move on to the course diagram, who, you know, who's this degree for, if you like? So I think um, fundamentally you don't, you know, hopefully you're coming in with a passion for filmmaking. I think that's that's quite obvious, and I'm sure all of you are. Um, I would say as a degree, uh, film and television degrees, you know, are quite challenging. I did a BA in literature, for example. Uh, it was just me and four books a week. And there's a lot of reading, but a lot of the sort of uh, challenges of group work, of logistics, of, you know, all the great, all the great and difficulty of making a film. Um, I had none of that. And I think when I look at the students that I teach now, it's a real, it's, you know, brings a smile to my face to see how challenging these degrees are in a positive way and how much they're learning by being in environments where they come out of their comfort zones and they're working on, you know, projects from, from year one. So it's a, I think you, you need to be creative and driven. You don't need all the, of course, you don't need to be a finished article. We're here to help you, but you do need to have the passion for filmmaking, I think. Um, and that will help you on the degree to, to do well. Uh, and then the other thing is, of course, you know, the aim should be that eventually you want to be working within the film or screen industry. So um, we do have a very strong um, slant towards independent cinema. So we don't teach any tele any traditional television, although I'm not sure what traditional television means anymore, but we don't, a lot of the films we refer to are films that you might only see at film festivals. Uh, they are often international films. Um, there's a lot of British cinema involved, but as I say, critically, 
we are a, a film course that's about the art of cinema. So um, it's, I suppose a lot of the frames of references are quite artistic. So if you do want to make independent films or you're interested in that type of cinema, then this course is really good for you. Um, international diverse cohorts, as David said, and one of the great beauties of being at UAL is uh, our classrooms are fantastically diverse places, lots of brilliant ideas, sometimes conflicting ideas, which is often also the interest leads to interesting debates. So you'll be joining a cohort of, of very international and very diverse people, which often ends up with much better screen work that you'll produce. Um, you should be prepared for an integration of theory and practice, as I've said. So if you do have some inclination towards enjoying film criticism or thinking about cinema or even thinking about your practice critically, I think you enjoy a lot of the, the sort of theoretical units on the degree. Uh, and then also we don't we don't simply do fiction and documentaries. So there's a whole movement of cinema that's moving away. Um, from looking at work as being either fiction or, or documentary. So we do a lot of work at, uh, on hybrid films, on experimental cinema. Um, so there's a, you know, there's a real onus on you trying to expand what it means to make cinema and what cinema means in itself. So we do welcome a lot of experimentation on, on the degree and there's a lot of space for um, going down the avant-garde routes if that is something that you're interested in, as well as the more traditional type of filmmaking. Um, that you might watch or want to do. Um, can we move on to the next slide, please? Thank you. So um, this is our course map. So you'll see in similar fashion to film and television, um, we have two semesters uh, running across the year. Um, and then they're about 15 weeks each semester. So um, I'm not going to take you through each unit because that's that'd be too much information. But just to tell you that in year one, the first year, that's a common year where you all study all the craft roles. You all basically learn the introductory level uh, for those uh, craft roles I mentioned, which is producing, directing, writing, cinematography, production design, uh, sound recording and design and editing. So you all get the, get the sort of common basics to that. And then in the second year, you will have to specialize and choose um, in the studio unit to do one of those roles only. And then in year two film in this in block two, which is a second semester here on my screen, you will have to do another role. So you can't repeat the same role. In this way, you'll start to develop specialisms in two different roles, which is fantastic, which is, A, makes you more employable, uh, and but also will help you if you just only want to do one role, having an understanding of another role at, at an intermediate level will really help you define your own role better. And then in the uh, third year, you will special you will choose again on the graduation film, and you would do and you would do one role at an advanced level. Um, so those orange units there are all production units. So you'll be working on a film on those units. The blue units are theory units and the green units are all geared towards giving you industry knowledge, which is creative industries in year two, block one. And then block two, year three, creative careers is all about preparing you uh, for the world of work or postgraduate studies. So we bring in guest lectures on those green units and we and in sp specifically in creative careers, you are tasked with coming up with a with a career plan which you can execute uh, as soon as you graduate. Um, and that would be a research informed career plan, which highly, you know, which sets out a, a three to five year plan on what you hope to achieve uh, after leaving us. Um, I'm sure you've got loads of questions uh, which we can save for the Q and A, but I am hand you back now to Chris Petter. Thank you. Thanks very much, David. Um, Okay, so um, as I said at the start, um, our course leader for this BA Film and Screen Studies couldn't be with us today, so I'll, I'll give you some um, some overview. But for more detailed information, I suggest you um, go and look on the website. There's a recording of an open day presentation um, where our course leader, Camilla Kutch, goes through all the details of the course. Um, so I would recommend you go there This if this course is particularly of interest to you. Um, so BA Film and Screen Studies, it teaches the historical, theoretical, cultural and critical analysis of film and screen uh, to the next generation of filmmakers and influencers. Um, 
and focusing around commissioning, distribution, curation, and exhibition of film and screen. Um, so you'll um, explore a rich global history of the moving image from 20th century alongside contemporary immersive and interactive platforms, so all kinds of new media. Uh, you develop that critical thinking through um, extensive program of film screenings, delivered alongside contextual analysis, and you'll explore film and screen narrative from cinematic, historic, national, geographic, genre, ethnic and diversity perspectives. And for your final graduation project, you'll collaborate and curate a film or screen festival. And the course aims to generate graduates who are insightful, analytical, commercially minded and ethnically aware. Um, you'll be taught the knowledge and skills for the current and emerging and evolving screen industries. Um, and you'll be looking at skills and practices around critical review, video essays, podcasting, distribution, curation, and exhibition of film and screen. And I think um, the key thing to note with this course is that this course, we don't teach um, film production, nor the filmmaking roles that you've been hearing about in um, through practical filmmaking exercises. And the practice part of this course is focused around the curation and distribution of film and screen. Um, and there are practical workshops that run on this course, such as, um, you know, you'd learn how to create video essays um, using Premiere, for example, but the focus um, is not really on a practice and production basis. You'll explore an extensive program of films and a broad investigative analysis, which underpins the intellectual core of your studies. And the graduation project is a student-led uh, film or screen festival. And this offers you the opportunity to curate an outward and public facing event. As with our other courses, this one promotes an inclusive approach to the distinct diverse voices from the UK and international filmmaking communities. And the course is modeled to generate graduates who are ethically aware, creative risk takers uh, for film and screen distribution. Um, the course is taught through an extensive program of screenings, lectures and seminars. Um, and you'll learn about moving image and screen practices through a combination of contextual theory units and practical workshops. Um, you'll explore how innovative techniques and tools inform storytelling and interactive interactivity on the screen. And you'll look at audience engagement and learn practical and critical skills for programming, curating, archiving or mounting an exhibition of the moving image for an audience. Um, and as with all our courses, you'll have a chance to collaborate um, with other programs across um, LCC. So on completing this course, you, you'll leave with an advanced understanding of how British and international film and television business works. You'll have a developed understanding of how your personal identity connects to film narrative and how to promote that vision. Um, you'll gain experience of curating outward facing festivals in a capital city. Um, you'll have a thorough understanding of film grammar and an overview of current and emerging film technologies. You'll build your network of industry contacts and you will have um, gained um, a complete set of collaborative and transferable skills that can compete effectively in any kind of employment market. So um, I'll leave that there on screen. You can see some um, contact emails. Um, all of these will be available on our website. Um, I say this is a kind of overview session for this program, but you can obviously gain um, course specific um, sessions and events and open days in person and so on. And you can book all of that in through our website. So if you've got particular inquiries, you can look for these um, following addresses. Again, you'll find all those contact addresses on the website. Um, so um, that wraps up the presentation part of um, our event. So we're now gonna move into um, the Q and A part of things. So I'll bring back in John and we'll have Tom, um, our graduate here and all of us will help any answer, answer any questions you've got for us. Lovely, thank you very much um, for that super interesting presentation, all of you. Um, yeah, very, very enjoyable to listen to and um, a couple of great questions coming in as well. So please do keep them coming. And um, the first one I've got, and I guess this would go best uh, well, to any of you, really, <laughs> there's questions coming in primarily for film practice, actually. And um, the first one is, do industry guest speakers come in for the film practice course and do masterclasses? Uh, shall I answer that, John? Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, I think there's two. D Dylan's are, uh, asked two questions. So I'll ask. Yeah, I'll answer the first one. Yes, there are on those green units I showed you on the on the course map. Uh, you will have uh, industry speakers coming in, uh, and also in the third year you will have industry. You have sort of. I would say they are mid-range filmmakers. We don't bring the masters in because there's no point because they're 20 or 30 years ahead of you. We bring people who are about 10 or 15 years since graduating who've got films into you know, the Berlinale or uh, Cannes and who are on their way in their, in their careers. We bring them in and they give you a lot of advice on your graduation project. So yes, we do do that um, at specific points of the degree. Um, should I add... Shall I answer Dylan's other question while we're here? That would be great. You don't need me. You're ahead of it. So that would be fantastic. Thank you, David. Okay, so Dylan, you asked um, whether I can clarify the number of specialism students have throughout the course. So yes, we specialize. We offer um, tutorials and workshops in the seven specialisms of producing, directing, writing, cinematography, production design, sound which includes sound recording and post-production sound uh, and then editing we don't do anything on animation special effects um or anything along or makeup or anything along those uh, lines just those seven core specialisms fabulous thank you very much david um i'm going to ask uh tom a couple of questions uh and then i will go back to the question that lilia has just typed in as well um but tom if you could maybe give uh, some of our prospective students an idea of um how much do you get the opportunity to collaborate with students there's some chat about collaboration how much have you been able to collaborate um with other students on the course yeah so um i think with all the courses, as mentioned by the tutors, collaboration is at the heart. I think in filmmaking as well, it's um, it's probably one of the biggest aspects of it. Straight away from first year, you're in with all of your fellow classmates and um, you're quick, very quickly broken up into groups to shoot films or to practice to get to that point. Um, analyzing films, working with teachers, so yeah, I'd, I'd say collaboration definitely takes place almost every day when you're in uni. Fabulous, thank you very much. And a question from uh, Lilia. Uh, when we start creating our UCAS application, do the three different programmes focus on different things when uh, looking for what to accept? That's probably a good one, Chris. I could answer. Oops. Yeah, go for it, David, yeah. Oh, David. I <laughs> Sorry, it's probably your yeah, your role, Chris. But I just remember Bill Bill uh, Bradley, who looks after all our all of our admissions, uh, has a very good uh, section on this. Where I think there are different requirements that each each program has different requirements, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but it's something that Bill Bradley deals with, who's our admissions officer. Chris, you may know more about this than I do. Yeah, I mean, I think. You know, when you're writing a UCAS statement, for example, um, you know, it's quite tricky because obviously you can apply for up to five courses. So you can't necessarily kind of really target what you're writing into one thing or another specifically, um, which can be a bit challenging at times, I think, for, for um, app students who are writing their applications. But I think, um, you know, we've touched on some of the areas we consider to be really key. And I suppose you know, you want to get across the passion for the subject you've got. You want to kind of maybe talk about what you think you might be able to bring um, to the course and to your classmates and so on. Um, and I think, you know, obviously we talked a lot about team working that runs right across the school. And I mean, like any, any of these kind of creative industry subjects, I mean, mostly, I mean, there's some roles in sound where you you might be working on your own more, but I mean, certainly in the filmmaking areas, you'll be working collaboration, the same on film and screen studies. You'll, you'll do group shows, you'll work in a group to curate um, a programme of events, for example. So I think trying to get some of those, um, you know, the key things you're interested in. I mean, if you've got some idea of anywhere you feel you might go on to a career, that's quite useful to see if you know already, or you think at this point, I'm thinking I, I might want to get involved in a particular type of area of the career. I think that can be really useful. And I think, it's also good to kind of, um, you know, maybe you've watched films you really enjoy or you've read books that you've really found engaging. And some of those can be quite helpful, I think, just to kind of give our admissions students a kind of sense of the sorts of ideas 
um, an interest you have and what you're engaging with kind of across the across your sort of world at this point you know what are those things that you really find of, of interest to you um, it's, it's, it's a difficult thing to do but I mean I obviously wish you best of luck with that and I think when you look at individual courses I mean you might well find you can find advice about um, if you've got to create a portfolio the kind of things people are looking for in a portfolio and you, you should find information about that on our individual course websites um, and also it's the kind of thing you can um, engage our, our teams with further I mean if you come in for an in-person event or a kind of info um, type of session you might be able to find a bit more on that yeah if I can just follow on from that um, at the bottom of our uh, course pages as Chris has said there are clear instructions on what we require at the application stage so right at the bottom if you go to any of our degrees you'll see and I think they're different across the three degrees so it's worth looking at that depending on the degree you're applying to Fabulous. That's extremely helpful. Yeah, writing those applications is extremely um, difficult at times. So all the guidance is much appreciated. Um, I'm very aware of the time. We've got two minutes until this is technically supposed to finish. So I'm going to wrap up really with just a couple more, unless anyone has any more burning questions that they want to throw out there. Um, so I'll start with uh, a question that we've had come up a lot in a lot of our others. Um, actually, I'm going to go for this a question's just been posted by Dylan again. Can you clarify the process of dropping specialisms over time? Um, I think that's maybe if I may, Dylan, that's the wrong way of looking at it. It should be gaining specialisms over time. Dropping specialisms sounds like you're getting rid of things. But actually, you start by all learning the seven core crafts in the first year. And then by any, you know, any act of specialization means narrowing it down. So you narrow down in the second year uh, those specialisms to two, and then you narrow further down to one. So by the time you become a third year student ready to graduate, you would have gained more experience and more practical skills, not got rid of more. So it's a case of acquiring through narrowing and specializing. Fantastic. Thank you. Um, yes, so that question that we've had in the majority of our sessions is students wanting to know whether or not they have to spend their own money on uh, in order to complete certain projects. Um, yeah, that's a good question. Um, I would say that um, we we on the course with the fact that we have a materials budget, um, certainly um, for myself as a course leader, I work with the course team to look at each unit of study uh, and some units of study don't have any um, expenditure required and we're very careful um, and I think it's fair to say across the programme that we indicate to students in advance um, through the unit guides and through the unit assignments um, if there's going to be any um, expenditure. Uh, certainly for the contextual studies sessions um, there's no um, expenditure on behalf of students um, and for the majority of the practice briefs um, we do provide production budgets um, so um, they change from year to year so it, it's not necessarily going to be helpful for me to sort of put specific numbers against these units of study um, but we certainly make sure that students have absolutely everything in order to produce you know, the, the best work that they can um, working within a group and collaborative um, uh, setting. So, yeah, we do support the productions and um, make sure that every student is advantaged in providing uh, the best work they can for assessment. Excellent. Thank you very much. Um, I'll do one more question. Um, and unfortunately, any more after this, I'll have to uh, encourage you to write to us, send us an email. Um, uh, I will type the email into the chat box in a sec, but the last question from Lilia, approximately how many students do the classes consist of and is it similar across the three courses? Um, do you want me to answer that? Yeah. Yes. Yep. Um, it varies on the mode of learning. So for example, in a lecture, uh, you will be a lecture, you know, it, it might be the whole cohort or your year group, which could be anything from 50 to 90 students, but then uh, the lecture as a mode of learning is usually uh, not very interactive. It's about condensed understanding of information. Uh, and then you'll have practical workshops. 
those will be very small, anywhere from 10 to 20, 10 to 20 students in the workshop, depending on the nature of it. Then you'll have one-to-one -one tutorials on your dissertation, on your some of your own progress reports and progress tutorials. And then you'll have small group tutorials. So when you're making films, you might see a supervisor where there's five of you to one supervisor for an entire session talking about your work. So um, I suppose what I'm trying to say is because of the complex nature of the learning, there isn't one mode. So we can't give you one staff to student ratio. I can tell you that where it needs to be small, it's small. Where it needs to be big, it's big. Um, so you, you're never going to be 30 people around two cameras learning a, in a workshop. That will never happen. Fantastic. Brilliant. Um, thank you so much, uh, all four of you, for um, yeah for hosting this presentation and sharing your expertise. Any passing words of wisdom for uh, any of our students watching? Yeah, uh, thank you, John. I would say one of the most important things is to actually go through a drafting process for the personal statement. Um, it really is an opportunity to tell your story um, about who you are and what your aspirations and aims are. Um, so spending time to really um, focus that, um, avoid just doing the first draft and sending that in, you know, really spend the time in making sure that you're giving yourself every opportunity. And that's only because we have so many applicants, um, you know, it, sometimes it's up to five to one for every student that's sitting in a lecture, other students haven't managed to get to that point through the application process. So personal statement is key. Fantastic, yeah. And now, I guess I'd just say thanks to everyone um, for joining me as well today and obviously all of you out there. Um, you know, just best of luck. I said, said earlier on, it's, you know, it's a challenging moment and, you know, trying to pick the right course for you um, is what, we're all hoping you do, as I'm sure you are too. But so any, any further information, I say, do your research, just get into the websites. Oh, I mean, you probably have already, but each course site will have lots more information. You'll have stories from students. Um, you'll have examples of student work. You'll get into a lot more detail um, and you can really kind of get a flavor of what, what's going on there. Um, but yeah, just wish you all the best of luck with that and really hope we see you at LCC um, come the autumn next year.